Hi everyone, what's up? It's Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. And today we've got a comparison of manual lever espresso makers. And going up against each other is the Cafe Lat Robot Barista versus the Flare Signature Pro 2. The choice of these particular brewers being the top of their class in each brand is down to the fact that they're each equipped with a pressure gauge you can read the brewing pressure on. Although there is a collection of other espresso makers out there that do promise nine bars of pressure or even more sometimes like 15 bars of pressure which is just not a thing these stack up fairly similarly in what they offer and their reputations for making fantastic espresso now a quick word to anyone who is considering purchasing one of these two manual espresso makers it will be a learning curve if you are new to espresso brewing. No more than really buying an espresso machine though. It is key to recognize that both will require a decent grinder of espresso grinding capabilities if you ever wanna weigh up the quality of the coffee that they both can achieve. But I bet you wanna know which one does it best. That's fine, but first I need you to smash that like button as it does help with the YouTube algorithm and we'd really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get back to the video. So let's just first cover off accessories as they are a big deal and can make or break a brewer's usefulness. And while many come with too many useless parts and others just don't come with enough of what you need, the robot and the flare have done really well to get it just about right. So both the robot and the flare come with solid metal tampers, which is very important. And flare taking out the win here for ergonomics and looks, but they both fit perfectly into their respective filter baskets. So I'm calling at a tie here. The robot is also accompanied by a double spout connection to the naked porter filter that can brew a double shot into two separate cups, which is great for sharing with someone and then making two espressos at once. Now the robot also comes with a stack of paper filters, a rubber mat as a drip tray, and spare seals and lubricant for the machine. The flare has a single stream connector to concentrate the flow of espresso out of its bottomless basket. And this eliminates any spurting out the sides too, making a mess on your bench. But I would much prefer a double spout over this connection if I was being honest. The flare comes with a stainless steel drip tray, a dosing cup and dosing ring, a porter filter rest, and it is also easily disassembled to be super compact into its own carry case as your perfect travel companion. And it's probably here where I would stop and say to myself, am I likely to wanna pack my espresso machine in my luggage and at some point take it with me if I go away traveling on business or on holidays? And then that way I can enjoy a delicious cup of coffee, the one that I prefer wherever I am. And whilst the robot is still compact, it's fairly heavy and not really travel ready. Whereas the flare is perfectly suited for this. But I can't really answer this question for you, so I'm gonna I'll leave that one for you and we're going to move forwards and check out porter filters and workflow. Both porter filters and basket assemblies have three parts to them. And the robot, you have the very cool standard commercial size 58 millimeter filter basket that sits in what really is just a cradle with a handle. The basket is quite tall as it doubles as your water chamber. So the coffee goes in, then the shower screen on top of that, and then you fill it up with water and away you go. So dosing into the robot's filter basket is painless, of course made easier that it is a 58 millimeter basket, so you can pick up any general espresso dosing cup with a link up above and make quick work of that. Being 58 millimeters in diameter, your bed depth is going to be quite thin or standard. Whichever way you look at it, you will want to make sure that you grind espresso fine or otherwise you won't be able to build enough resistance whilst brewing and that espresso will just pour out the bottom. Though you will be able to fit upwards of 28 grams in this basket and still achieve a really good brew ratio because the basket is so big. And there lies the double-edged sword. With the width of the size of the basket, it does impact the strength required to build the pressure whilst brewing. And those paper filters too, now you can add these to the bottom of the filter basket, although the diameter is better suited to the top of the ground coffee. And I believe they are meant to be as a replacement to the shower screen, but in conjunction with them and underneath the shower screen on top of your coffee, this actually improves the shot by mitigating the risk 
risk of channeling through the shot, it works quite well, but you are limited in how many you get with the robot initially. And I know what you're thinking, unfortunately they are much smaller than an AeroPress paper filter, and I would treat them only as an addition and not a requirement in using the robot. Whereas the Flare uses a separate filter basket with a shower screen, and that way the water chamber attaches on top of this via an O-ring, and then you fill it up through the hole in the top. And the Flare now has a 49 millimeter filter basket that's tapered down to the bottom. And I find it maxes out at around 22 to 24 grams in the basket and any less than 16 grams and you won't be able to tamp it down. But the shower screen is a nice solid piece of metal and then using the dosing ring helps get all the coffee into the basket fairly easily without too much mess. Now, my experience with the Flare suggests that there is a similar espresso grind to the robot, but it's also something to note that because of the increase in the depth of that tamped coffee in the Flare's basket, you can get away significantly more with a lesser fine grind. And I say lesser more than coarser as it will still need a finer grind but you could possibly get away with using a grinder that's not quite as dedicated to espresso and still brew delicious shots around the five to six bars of pressure, whereas the robot shot in a similar way doesn't really flow or taste the same. Now, one thing that does become apparent in brewing with these manual lever espresso machines is thermal stability within the brewing chamber, as there's no electricity keeping everything at just the right temperature. The robot's brew chamber, where all the brewing gets done, weighs only 90 grams, so it's not a huge heat sink. So the robot isn't really set up to do an easy preheat, including getting that piston nice and hot, unless you're submerging everything under hot water, but definitely with a gentle preheat of the basket and on successive espresso shots, you will see an improvement in flavor. Now the Flare Pro's porter filter on the other hand has an assembly weight of 550 grams. It's that amount of metal in the Flare's water chamber that's quite hefty and requires two minutes or so of preheating of that water chamber before you begin brewing. Or otherwise, the density of the metal here will pull out a lot of heat from your brew water and you'll end up with noticeably cooler espresso or worse, having them brewed sour. Luckily, it's not too much of an inconvenience and in fact, Flare have designed pieces to help you preheat the brew chamber. And the porter filter rest acts as a watertight seal for your water chamber and then you can be dosing out your coffee into your basket while this is preheating. So with your coffee tamped, your shower screen on, next it's time to add the water. And I like to volumetrically add my water so I can then just enjoy pressing down and watching the flow of espresso knowing that I'll be hitting my target espresso weight plus or minus a few grams. And I don't particularly wanna be focusing on the pressure gauge along with the brew time and along with the brew weight, not before I have even had my first coffee. So a very standard recipe that works quite well for both of these is a 20 grams in, 40 grams out, and I would add 60 to 65 grams of water to both chambers to achieve that 40 grams out. Depending on the coffee that you use, it will vary, but I haven't found it vary enough for me to modify my method yet. And whilst we're on that topic of measuring our espressos, the Flare Pro does have a larger drip tray to it that you can place a set of espresso scales on quite easily and then measure your espressos that way. Whereas it is difficult to find a good set of scales to fit the robots and you kind of have to have them at an angle and so far I've only discovered the Akea Pixis to be able to do this with a link up above for them. Now you've waited long enough so let's get brewing. So brewing on the robot, lift the handles and then lock in that porter filter, left or right it doesn't matter. Then begin to press slowly down on the handles. You'll feel good feedback through the levers. The robot is a little harder to see the flow of espresso and then watch that small pressure gauge whilst getting leverage on the levers. And they are a little awkward to hold, but that look of espresso is always fantastic and that end result with crema lives up to expectations. The flare, you wanna finish up that preheat, attach the filter basket to the water chamber Add your water into the chamber and then press down the plunger to remove any air gap inside the chamber to add a specific amount of water to this. Then the last thing to do is add the pressure gauge, sit it on top and then begin pressing slowly down on the handle. The Flare's single handle is much more comfortable to apply pressure against while you stabilize the rest of the unit. The gauge is quite large and gives you good feedback as you're pressing down and you can tilt it towards you to see it better. The Flare's brew assembly though 
does have an issue, and as you apply further pressure throughout the shot, those two chambers occasionally begin starting to split apart. Now, I've never released the handle whilst pressing, nor has this ever began to leak water, but both of those things may happen, so it's just something to look out for. Otherwise, you always get fantastic looking shots on the flare with great crema and a good flow. So the espressos on both of these is superb. And that texture, it's always one of those things that I notice first that lacks in other brewers that say they're espresso but don't quite fit the bill. Whereas the espresso here has all those hallmarks of texture and body. The viscosity is pretty much there and there's obviously a lot of crema. There's that intensity of an espresso shot with flavor that's really well balanced. So with the espresso fantastic, how is the cleanup? and resetting if you want to make another one. Now the robot's cleanup and resetting requires you to remove the porta filter, which is best done by lifting the handles and then tilting that basket up a little bit. You want to wait for the basket to cool enough to knock out those grinds, rinse it, wipe it, and then you're ready to go again. It's pretty well as easy as a regular espresso machine. And much the same with the flare, except there's a few extra things you need to do, but disassemble that porta filter. It does have a nice silicon heat pad that you can handle everything whilst hot. Knock out your puck. Sometimes this is a little harder to do because it's tightly packed in there, but a little trick I know is to blow on the other end and that will get all those grinds out pretty easily. Rinse it, dry it, and then repeat the process. And if you're quick enough, I would say you won't need to preheat it again. So looking at the wear and tear and longevity concerns on both of these, the robot being completely metal with no plastic parts is fantastic. And I'd say it's just that plunger seal, which you do have a spare for, and that shower screen, which are likely to be the things that are gonna be needing to be replaced first. And on the flare, you'd be looking at each of the O-rings on the Porter filter assembly, which you can buy a complete replaceable pack for, possibly the shower screen, and perhaps those silicon handles as your main replaceable parts on the flare. Now it is good to know though that each of these brewers does have extra porta filters, shower screens, and seals with other spare parts available for sale. Meaning that these are not consumable coffee brewers, but brewers that will happily brew coffee for years to come. And my final point to make is price and availability. So depending on where you are in the world, both the Robot Barista and the Flare Pro 2 come in three different colors. And there are also cheaper versions available of both without those pressure gauges. As it compares here though, the Robot Barista is a little bit more expensive to buy. At the end of the day, both of these brewers have exceptional build quality with precision. The workflow though, I think the robot slightly nudges out the flare there. However, they both make exceptional espresso experiences for the home user. For me personally though, I chose the Flare Pro 2 based on my known itineraries of traveling. And most of the time I wanna take a coffee brewer and a hand grinder with me. And the Flare Pro without a doubt will provide the best espresso brewing on the road. And I happily brew delicious coffee with the Flare Pro every day. But the robot, Throw that on the bench at home, it would comfortably suit the whole family, or even a small office, or just for yourself, day in, day out. I think with a little less parts and procedures, and that standard size filter basket, it opens up a lot more possibilities. So, there's my summary right there. Let me know if this was a fair comparison, have I missed anything? And tell me, what do you like about each of these and what don't you like? And of course, if you have any questions on the Robot Barista or the Flare Signature Pro 2, then throw them in the comments section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy your week. We'll see you next time.